Imagine with me, you are having a conversation with an AI agent on a Monday, and then during that conversation, you have provided some very important piece of information that's going to be extremely relevant to the remaining of that conversation until you accomplish whatever the outcome you are trying to accomplish, right? But for some reason, that conversation finishes on Monday and then you resume it on a Wednesday or perhaps next week. And then all of a sudden, when you start a new conversation, the AI agent is able to remember everything that you have said before. It's been 84 years. It's okay, just try to remember anything, anything at all. This is the example of what we call long-term memory applied to the concept of agentic architectures, right? So we're going to use the same example here and show how you can actually implement this using the integration between LangGraph and Redis. So you can reuse long-term memory across different conversation or threads, and more importantly, make sure that this piece of information is reused with the right user at the right time. Let's get to it. Let's get started by taking care of the dependencies that are required for this application to run. So the first one is going to be obviously the Redis database. And then for this, uh, what you are going to use is this uh, Docker Compose file that I provided with the sample code here in this example. So in this Docker Compose, uh, you are going to be able to instantiate a Redis database using the eighth version of the uh, of Redis. And then this is handy because you don't need to install anything. And if you have Docker installed in your machine, you can uh, simply spin up by executing Docker Compose. So all you got to do is to Docker Compose up this project and then when you see this message ready to accept connections TCP, that means that the Redis database is open for business, right? So uh, let's move forward. And then the also the dependencies for the LangGraph application and just Jupyter Notebook is, are, are also important. I'm going to actually start the execution here of them. So there are three that you need to take care of. The first one is the LangChain OpenAI. We're going to use OpenAI here as our LLM for this example. And obviously, since we're building a LangGraph application, we need LangGraph as a dependency, and we need a dependency that provides the integration between Redis and LangGraph, right? So this is going to be fulfilled by LangGraph Checkpoint Redis, right? I'm going to explain the concept of Checkpoint in a minute, right? But before I move forward to the actual implementation, let, let me explain what the example that we're going to build. Like, I'm going to uh, jump to the, to the end here so you can understand the logic that we're going to build. So... Essentially, we're going to start a set of conversations with the LLM and uniquely identify the threads or conversations that we're going to use. But more importantly, we're going to also identify the user, right? So think about the identification of the user as a unique ID that it human being uh, talking with the uh, the agent is going to be provided with, right? This, as you can see here, is a string. So you can use a custom one, you can use a generated identifier, you are free to use whatever approach suits you. But uh, the most important part here is that as we provide the same user ID, the information that pertains to that user ID needs to be stored within that code, right? And then uh, every time we need to actually kind of uh, deviate from that conversation with uh, the same user ID, but another conversation. So as you can see here, the second uh, iteration is going to be the same user ID with another thread, right? So same user, but different conversation. Let's say, for example, that the user started a conversation in one day, and then one day after he pops up in the chat again and started either start a new conversation or resume the conversation. It doesn't matter, right? What matters here in the example, what needs to happen is that all the pieces of information that pertains to that user, the LLM needs to remember, right? Technically, it's not the LLM that remembers. It's the LangGraph application that pulls the data from the database where the information is stored, in this case, Radis, and then it provides as a context to the LLM. So, but this is the example that we're gonna build. Uh, let's uh, walk you through step by step. Um, as I mentioned before, we're gonna use OpenAI here as our LLM, and because of this, you need to create a OpenAI API key beforehand, right? So I'm going to provide here in the description of this video, the instructions about how you can create one. But as you create it, make available as a environment variable, right? So you can, as you can see, so you can use here in this Jupyter notebook. And this is the part where you need to provide a vector store, right? So Ricardo, why you need a vector store here? 
so the 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 integration between uh, Redis and LangGraph allows you to store different pieces of information. One of them is plain data, uh, such as JSON document uh, documents or hashes, or you can store embeddings, right? So this is more for you to uh, to have a flexible way to actually store information, and this information is going to be the cross thread or uh, multi-conversations uh, pieces of information that a user may provide during that interaction with the uh, the agent, right? So uh, in this case, we're going to use this capability of storing information on Redis, and for this, we need a index, right? So index is a basic construct for you to create at Redis, so all the information that is stored there becomes searchable, right? So this is backed by something called Red Square Engine, right? So the Red Square Engine is going to be the uh, the system behind the scenes that, given a prompt or input, is going to be able to find information that you were looking for, right? So uh, what matters is that you need to define this index as we are defining here, and then you are going to connect with Redis that at this point is running behind the scenes, and we're going to use this construct here called red store, and then you can use the from connection string uh, function, provide the red URI, provide the index, and instantiate the red store, right? So the most important part here is that you invo invocate this function called setup, right? So what setup does is essentially go to red and then creates all the uh, all the indexes that are going to be required for here. So if you go here on indexes, you're going to see that you have like store, you have store vectors, uh, which is essentially the indexes that are going to be used behind the scenes. You, when you store like plain data, you're gonna use store, and when you store embeddings or vectors, you're gonna use store vectors, right? So uh, that's that's the consequence of you invoke that function setup, right? Now, we've created the red store, and then let's talk about the actual implementation of our graph, right? So the graph here, is going, I'm going to execute so you can see the visualization of the graph and then I'm going to walk you through later and what it does. So the graph here is going to start, call the module, and then it's going to end. It's a very simple graph for demonstration purposes, but it's a very powerful one, right? It's because uh, what's going to do is not only to uh, be able to provide the models that we're using, but also we're going to be able to use the concept of vector store along with check pointers, right? So uh, in here, we're creating the graph. So builder.compiles, as you can see here, we're providing as a parameter the check pointer that we've created and red store, right? So where is this red store is coming from? We've just created here the red store, right? So that's the connection with the Redis that again is going to be used to store the cross thread uh, pieces of information, right? And Ricardo, what is the need of the check pointer here? So check pointer is for you when you want to uh, store the information within a single thread or the same conversation that's currently being handled by uh, LangGraph. So, uh, in, the, in the video that I've created before that talks about short-term memory with LangGraph and Radis, you can see the need for uh, check pointers. But just remember that check pointers are a way for you to, as the LangGraph application executes, all the states that pertains to that is a particular execution are saved in a data store like Redis using check pointers, right? So it is almost like we are using here both short-term memory check pointers and long-term memory, which is the uh, Red store that we're providing here, right? So, um, the check pointer is created here uh, by this building block called red saver, and then we're also using the front connection string to instantiate the check pointer. We'll also execute it here the setup part. This setup part also creates some indices on Redis, which is the indices that you can see here. So that's the checkpoint writes, the checkpoints, and the checkpoints blobs. So, so those three additional indices were created giving the usage of check pointers, right? So uh, also, the actual graph that we've created, as I mentioned before, is a simple graph, so we created the state graph here, and then we added a node called call model that essentially points to this call model function here, and then we added a edge, which is the start, where the edge is the beginning of the, the your graph. So the call model is where the, actually the magic happens, so the call models we've 
we've provided the, to the land graph the ability to interact with the pieces of information stored on red. So uh, you can ask Ricardo, but since we have the uh, the check pointers already instantiated and the vector store already instantiated, do we need to actually kind of provide this type of information? Uh, yes, if you want to customize uh, how the, the, the messages and the pieces of information are going to be retrieved from the vector store. So in here, we're, uh, we're using like some construct, like what is the namespace that we're using here to actually interact with the piece of information that is stored there. So we have using the keys like memories, and then we're uh, perusing like the arrays like messages, which is the states that is stored on this. And then we're using the store.search uh, as a function to actually iterate with this. So, and, and this call model, we're actually providing the land graph the ability to how to search data at Redis, right? So with namespaces, we key, which key prefixes, which entities needs to be evaluated for you to um, locate a specific type of information, right? So now that we have our graph defined, let's start using it, right? So I've created this uh, utility function here called print stream that basically is going to walk through a stream and then it's basically for, for us to not able to be able to manipulate like if it's a simple message just print the message or if it's a json uh, one we're going to actually uh print pretty right so that's so you can see more visually uh in our console right so let's start our conversation by uh providing the config which is the there's going to be thread id number one and then the user number one and the message is going to be hi my name is bob right so that is going to be useful for us to make sure that this piece of information is stored on Redis, right? So as you can see, the AI message or LLM responded, hello, Bob, how can I assist you today, right? And then this is going to be the equivalent, right, of a different conversation. Let, let's say, for example, that you have different window pop-ups open, right? The first one is one conversation identified by thread ID one. And this one, as you can see here, uses the thread ID two, right? So two co different conversations, but from the same user. And then the question that the user, the human is going to ask is going to be, what is my name? And guess what? The LM, or more importantly, the LangGraph agent needs to be able to, okay, here's the thread ID number two. So a brand new thread ID, brand new conversation, but same user. I'm going to use this integration that was provided by the call model before to actually inspect the vector store and try to locate information about user number one and it's going to be able to find as you can see here so the question is what is my name I said yeah your name is bob i remember that because you mentioned this before right so this is what makes the lane graph uh integration with reds particularly useful because this is the type of experience that users want to have in the real world that uh, makes them feel a little bit more comfortable talking with the AI, right? Because uh, it, it gives us that feeling that, okay, it's I'm interacting and as I'm interacting is remembering things. But this is what we call long-term memory, right? Because uh, like I said before, this is a second conversation that imagine that maybe took place uh, two days, three days, a week later than the previous conversation. And if, even though that happens, uh, the agent was able to remember that uh, piece of information. So that's how that's why we, we, we say that it's called long-term memory because it uh, the persistency and the durability of that information takes more than the single thread or the single conversation to expire, right? And then to validate if this is actually also true because we have to also negate the, 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 the validation here, right? Because we can say, okay, Let's start a new conversation, thread ID three, and then another user, right? And then let's ask the same question. What is my name? So presumably the uh, land graph state in the vector store associated to this is not gonna have any piece of information of a user ID number two. So what needs to happen is that, I don't know who you are, unfortunately. And there we have it. Like the, the answer for the AI was, I'm sorry, I don't have access to the personal information about you, so including your name. If you would like, you can tell me your name and how you'd like me to for you to be addressed. So if if I provided my name here, we, we're gonna be 
100% sure that is going to remember because all the plumbing and integration with RAD is, is already took place. So we're going to need, we're going to be able to store that information. But this is important because that proves that uh, pieces of information associated with a given user are not going to be swapped or exchanged with another user, right? Think about this as the concept of sessions on an HTTP environment, right? You don't want your shopping cart of uh, to be shared or reused by another uh, user, right? Or payment data or credit card information, right? So the, this is the importance of being able to associate pieces of data with different threads right, for specific users, but being able to reuse that piece of information in multiple threads and multiple conversations, right? So just to wrap up here, uh, optionally, uh, the SDK from Red Store gives you the ability to also uh, inspect that information that is stored there, right? So you can use this Red Store search API to like walk through the memories from the conversations, right? And also optionally, if you have access to Redis Insight, and you can simply uh, use your, your IDE to actually store this. If you go to store, for example, you're going to see here that the value of that conversation, your username is Bob, is stored here as a JSON document, right? So also, uh, and that happened out of the box, we also stored that same piece of information, right? Memories, we call here memories one, right? And as you can see here, instead of actually the JSON document, we started the embedding or the set of vectors that it is the equivalent of the same information. So what that means is that you can also perform similarity search to answer the question. For that user ID, is his name Bob? So that's that's a, a different way for you to retrieve the same piece of information. This is more on the arena of being flexible in how you retrieve the data. It's not necessarily a requirement, but it is nice for this integration from Redis and LangGraph to provide you the ability to store even plain data and uh, vector data so you can search whatever approach you want to pursue. That is great, right? Now you have the ability to make sure that your AI agent not only remember things that were discussed before, but use them with the right thread and with the right user, right? This is very important, not only for security purposes, but for the user experience that uh, the human being are having with your AI agent. If you like the approach that we have used here, I highly encourage you to take a look on the set of examples that are available on the uh, GitHub repository that I'm gonna post here on the description of this video. It contains different other approaches that you can leverage between this integration of Redis and LangGraph, like other scenarios where memory management are relevant. And it's gonna give you the ability to customize how you actually uh, pull data, store data, and retrieve data at the right moment at the right time, right? But different scenarios and examples and use cases, right? If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you enjoy the content from this channel, I would highly encourage you to also subscribe it so you never miss the next video that we're going to publish. I appreciate the time that you have spent here today with me and as always, see you next time.